Welcome back, everybody. It's been a little bit since I've posted a video, but I'm hoping that we could get back into the swing of things and start posting more videos to help all of you in your scientific journey. If you're new around here, I did my PhD, my postdoc over at Harvard Medical School. I transitioned over to industry, but I do have a lot of uh, colleagues I've stayed you know, really close with that have had success moving into a position in academia. So I know the ins and outs of grad school, postdoc, getting a position in, in academia, moving over to industry. And I try to post videos here that I think are gonna help all of you in your journeys as scientists, as you're navigating the waters and trying to figure out what's you know right for the next step in your career. Please try to leave comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I try to answer all of the comments. I also uh, make videos out of a lot of the comments that are left below. And I think that, you know, it's really important to do that because a lot of the questions that you guys have are ones that a lot of other people have. And this is actually, today's video is, a, you know, a viewer question. And that's about how's the best way to stay organized when you have multiple different ongoing projects. Now, for this, I'll take the example of being a postdoc and saying that you're juggling multiple projects because that's typically going to be the period of time where you're going to juggle the most projects is going to be during your postdoc. Um, there's really good ways of doing this and then there's really bad ways of doing this. So a really bad way of doing it is to kind of just go into the lab every day and sort of just wing it. Now I've seen some intermediate approaches that have worked well for some people. So I do know some people that would make lists like in Microsoft Word of like during this week, these are the things that I need to do. I need to do X, Y, and Z. Um, I think this is good, but personally for me, it's not granular enough. For some people, it's fine. Like if you're going to be spending long hours in the in the lab and you have time to move, shuffle, do things in different orders, that may be good enough for you. But for me, I wanted to come in, get my work done, and then be able to go home at a reasonable time so I could spend time with my family and my son. So... The way that I would go about this is I would actually block off my experiments in my calendar and I would have a view that way. So what I would do is I would first have all of the meetings that I needed to attend marked off. So that was like my one-on-one -on -one with my PI, lab meeting. We had like a rotational um, uh, data club that we would go to. You know, we had seminars on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. One was internal, one was external. Like I would mark off all of those activities that I had. So I know that these are regularly occurring things and I need to make sure I make room for them, uh, you know, when I'm planning my experiments. Now, the next thing I did was I looked at the very um, big experiments I need to do that need to be done at specific times. So for example, at the institute where I was at, the people that would clean and do all the handling of the mice during the day, they would do that in the mornings. So we weren't allowed to do things with mice unless we had specific rooms marked off to do them. Most everything that we would do, like getting body weights or weaning mice or changing food if they were on a restricted diet or something, that needed to be done in the afternoon. So I know that whenever I had an ongoing animal project going on that I would need to block off time in the afternoon. So I would block off the times where I needed to do body weights. I would block off the time when I needed to check to see what mice needed to be weaned. I would block off time when I needed to, um, you know, maybe put them in to some sort of an experiment. I would make sure I had all of those times blocked off. Then I could work on the mornings or, you know, maybe if there was an afternoon free right, didn't have something going on, then I could go through and, and block off the other times. So on the days where I didn't have animal experiments, those were the times where I could plan my really long all day experiments. So for example, if I was doing like CHIP, which was something that was a long experiment all day, I didn't have a lot of breaks except for like an incubation that I could go for lunch. What I would do is look at my calendar and I would say, okay, this is when uh, I could do this experiment because it's not like a Western blot where you can just, it takes all day, but there's a lot of breaks in between. So I would say, okay, this is the day that I could do this experiment. And then what I would need to do is work backwards. So if this is the day I could do the experiment, 
when would I need to actually seed my cells so that they'll be ready on this particular day to do this particular experiment? And that's what I would do. So I would block those really long all day experiments on those days where I had mornings and afternoons free. Then what I would do is I would go in and I would fill in my cell culture. So cell culture I always did in the morning and I would fill those in because I needed to know which days I needed to arrive early so that I could start warming up my media, getting it ready for the day. Once I had my cell culture experiments planned out and my animal experiments and my really long all day experiments planned out, then what I would do is I would carve out which days I was gonna be doing things like Western blotting or gene expression um, or other kinds of molecular techniques that have lots of downtime, incubation times that you could work around. And then I would put those into my calendar. And then what ends up happening is I would have my calendar filled out for the next few weeks with this is when I'm going to be doing my in vivo work, my molecular work, and my in vitro work. And then I was able to go through and say, okay, here's where I'm going to have an hour free, or here's where I'll have two hours free. And then I could schedule when I was going to be doing like reading papers, etc. in those times. Or what I would do sometimes if it was really busy is I would save that for the evening. So I would do my lab work during the day. I would get my molecular stuff done, my in vivo stuff, my in vitro stuff. Then I would go home and I would eat dinner. I'd see my wife and I'd spend some time with my son. And then when my son went to sleep, then I'd go back and go do the reading that I needed to do to catch up on. Or if I was writing a paper or whatever, I would do that later. But that's sort of the way that I would go about planning my time. And I think this is the most effective way. So starting with scheduling out the things that you have to block off during certain hours of the day. So this could be restrictions because this is when, you know, the animal facility, you know, workers are, are not there and you could do your experiment or it could be a time-based thing. So say that you fasted animals overnight for 16 hours and then you needed to do something first thing in the morning, you know, planning those things first then planning your big experiments that you would need like a full day to do where these things aren't going to interrupt and then fitting in your your cell culture and then your other you know miscellaneous molecular techniques i think that's sort of the the ideal way to do it i'm sure that somebody could comment down below about how they do it and and i'm sure others have figured out even better ways of of doing it but at least this is how i did it and when i did this i was able to within a day seamlessly go from cell culture to a molecular experiment uh, to an in vivo experiment and then back to a different molecular experiment. And I was able to do multiple different experiments in one day and carry multiple projects. So when I was a postdoc, um, I carried five projects at the same time. So to be able to carry that many projects and do that many experiments, you have to be um, really coordinated in, in your efforts and make sure that you're blocking off appropriate time. And you can't do all projects. This is one other thing I want to point out. You can't do all projects all the time. There's going to be lulls. So for example, if you're generating a new cell line for one project, that's going to be a lot of time where you're just waiting. That's a good time to advance a different project. And then maybe with that project, you know, you have mice that are on a on a high fat diet or some kind of a special diet or there's a tumor model and they're you know you're you got to wait for eight weeks 10 weeks 12 weeks that's a really good time to advance a different project or advance a different part of that project um and so it's a lot of planning and knowing what's upcoming and how one thing is going to be dipping down in intensity and how you could start stepping up intensity of another project um, and this is something that I really encourage you to work out with your PI to make sure that you're doing that appropriately. Because um, I think a lot of times for more junior researchers, this is just something that's really challenging to do. So I just kind of wanted to go over this and, and just drop in and say hi to everybody. And I hope all of you are doing great and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.